Okay, uh, welcome to Brno, the city of my youth. I would like to start with a little story which uh, my friend, late uh, John O'Hala, told me. He was endless uh, source of the stories, and one of these stories I found particularly useful as an opening uh, for this conference. The story goes as a, as a following, I hope, yeah. Uh, there was a tribe in Scandinavia which had a hard time crossing the stream. One day the, after the storm, they woke up and there was a, a trunk laying across the stream and suddenly they could cross the stream without any problem. So they said, wow, now we have a technology. Let's build a bridge between Sweden and Denmark. Of course, I mean, I'm not saying that uh, our speech uh, technology nowadays is a, a, is a trunk which accidentally fell across uh, the stream. However, I still think that there is a lot which we can learn, just like a people when they have seen the trunk across the stream, had to learn a lot before they were able to build the, the bridge uh, from Denmark to Sweden, that we still have a lot uh, to learn. As we observe, now we are getting a lot of support. A lot of money is coming into research in speech, and in particular in, in development of speech technology. And I really would like to remind everybody that in order to get all the way to the point where we can start building something truly similar to, to uh, bridge, from Denmark to, uh, to Sweden, we have to do quite a lot of work before we understand more uh, about human speech communication and how to emulate it in machines. For that reason, I think that interspeech is very, very seriously remembering that it's not only engineering, which is uh, speech and speech technology, but it's a human speech communication, which is of our interest, and for that, I welcome you at, uh, to Interspeech 2021 here in Brno. Next. <laughs> Next, I would like to uh, show the video of Governor of South Moravia, Jan Grolich, who is sending us a message. And after that, uh, the, uh, Professor Zemchik from the, uh, from the Faculty of Information Technology will give, uh, give us a short invitation. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to welcome you, at least in this way, to Interspeed. It's 2021, the largest conference of this kind in the world. Only a few years ago, it was only a handful of people who were working in this field and many of those pioneers are among you today. And now, voice assistants and automated call centers are part of our lives. This is a great opportunity to make lives easier for many people. And I am proud that Interspeech 2021 is taking place in Brno, in South Moravia. Thanks to Brno University of Technology and numerous businesses, Brno is now real speech valley. I wish everyone who could come to our region a joy of our hospitality, beauties of our landscape and of course great wine. And those who are connected only online, I believe that you will have the opportunity to come to visit us in the near future. You are always welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much to Hine Gershmansky, our professor who started uh, this session, and also thanks to Jan Grolich, governor of South Moravian regions, for this nice introductory video. My name is Pavel Zemčík, and I'm dean of the Faculty of Information Technology of Brno University of Technology. But in fact, my role here is to represent Brno University of Technology, so let me greet you in the name of our rector, Professor Petr Stepanek, rector of the university. And uh, well, it's great to have interspeech in Brno. So interspeech is really important conference and we are really happy 
to everything in Brno. In fact, honestly said, in these difficult COVID times, we are happy to have any conference at all in Brno, <laughs> which <laughs> doesn't lower the, the importance of, importance of interspeech. So hopefully our difficult COVID, COVID times are over, at least in this region, and um, hopefully you enjoy Brno, you enjoy Br enjoyed Brno University of Technology, those uh, who were in the tutorials yesterday, and hopefully you will enjoy Brno, and I wish you uh, good luck with the conference and, and success to the conference, and of course, welcome to Brno. Thanks very much. So thank you very much, Pavel. Big thanks to our governor, uh, Jan Grolich. Now it's my turn uh, for more practical information. I'm uh, Honza Czernocki. So let's first speak about the timing. You know, it's quite strange to open a conference in the, in the middle of the afternoon. And uh, the whole timing is weird. This is because of the time zones and because uh, we are running in a hybrid mode. So it's not possible to satisfy everyone, but at least we try to minimize the damage. And please, colleagues in the US and in Asia, uh, accept my sincere apologies for uh, getting up very late, uh, early in the morning or staying, uh, staying up late uh, in the night. So this is the schedule at glance. Uh, today was a little bit longer because of the opening ceremony. But on the normal days, we are uh, starting at uh, 11 uh, a.m. Central European summertime. And we are going late uh, into the evening. Uh, this is the floor plan of the hotel, but I think the people in Brno are already familiar with it. We just uh, counted also with people that need to connect to the uh, virtual sessions from the hotel. So there are spots uh, to, to sit and there is one special room for uh, session chairs that need to chair the remote uh, sessions. We need to respect the COVID rules, so uh, take the, keep the distance, wear these funny uh, gas masks. Uh, and disinfect hands and be generally careful. Uh, of course, uh, it's my turn to announce also the bad news. So uh, first, we have found a bug in the proceedings. We are missing pictures, uh, figures in uh, some of the papers and the paper processing company is aware of it and will fix it. So we will post uh, updates both to the ISCA archive and uh, to the conference uh, website. Then we have uh, quite some bugs and changes in the abstract book that we uh, couldn't put uh, into the printed or PDF version. So there is uh, actually a correction to the uh, student paper award uh, nominees. One paper shouldn't be there because it's not a student one. And another one has uh, somehow magically disappeared. So please uh, check the website uh, for, the, for the complete errata. We also needed to reorganize uh, two of the oral sessions because there were some gaps. So basically these uh, were uh, filled. And please beware, this is the afternoon session uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Just check the correct order of papers. In the platform, on the web, it's correct, but not in the abstract book. Plus there were quite some changes of uh, session chairs. And uh, this is not uh, all. I was just informed before the session that Germany announces some major train strike. So please colleagues from Germany that made it here, check your trains to be able to make it back. Otherwise you are welcome in Brno forever. So, so. Uh, some some uh, other messages. Uh, we have of course the website, the platform, you know all that, but we also have Twitter. So please follow the Twitter. We want to gather uh, as much public uh, as we can. And that's the practical uh, opening. Now is the section of the thanks. So I need to thank uh, the sponsors. Uh, we, we got substantial uh, funding from the founding sponsor Amazon, from platinum sponsor uh, Apple, from Diamond One Microsoft. We had silver sponsors, ByteDance, Facebook, Google, and uh, Phonexia, the local company. And uh, bronze sponsors were 3M Multimodal, uh, Baidu, uh, HLT, uh, Johns Hopkins, and IBM. So thanks very much to all these sponsors. We also got a grant from ONR for support of the conference platform. We also have a couple of exhibitors, both uh, remote and, uh, and uh, physically present. So thanks to them. We also have some projects presenting their results in the exhibition. Also big thanks. 
and uh, we have partners, the Czech Convention Bureau and Bureau AI, that gave us either some money or some publicity. So my thanks also to these people. Interspeech is a team effort. So uh, there were quite some people participating at the organization. I think the major thanks belong to the technical chairs, Lukáš, Lori, Odette, and, uh, and Peter for their work. But there were many more. So uh, I will just read the first names because I need to cut my presentation short. Tutorial, Sienda and Anil, special sessions, Sakti, Pavel, Showentel, Reinhold, and Najim, some of them here, some of them remotely. Publications, Ralph, Jindřich, Plenaris, Mark, Jan, Satellites, Umesh, and uh, Tomohiro. Grants, Esther, Mireya, Diversity, very important chairs, uh, Julia and, uh, and Heidi. And uh, industry sponsoring and local arrangements were done by Petr, Buvana, Ilya, Sanjeev, Renata, Katka, and uh, Barbar. We also had exhibits managed by Petr and Igor, social. These guys are here, so can advise you about all the beer in Brno, Andre and Odrik. And finances, uh, our financial lady Silva and Gernot with the beer. Finally, students managed by Katka and publicity. Uh, sorry, Katka and Karel, publicity by Jan, Kai, and Florian. We are helped by a professional conference organizer, so big thanks to the Garant guys. These are the main ones, uh, but there are more of them here. So Romana, Jan, Adam, and uh, Aleš, you can see around, but there were many more people, and we will thank them in the closing uh, ceremony. Brno is a speech technology city, so around the two university groups, you have a couple of companies, but it's also a music and speech city. So Leo Janáček, the famous composer of 20th century, was not born, but he lived in Brno, and he was famous for going to the vegetable market and just scribbling the voices he heard on, on his shirt, and he made the beautiful music out of it. We will not hear a music by Janáček, but of two of his followers today, and I'm really looking forward very much to the performance of Milan Pala and Katarina Palova. So basically, Milan Pala is kind of violin prodigy, and uh, if you want the official information like which schools he studied, you can go to his web page. I'm just so happy that I could get him to this conference because me and my wife, we love his music, and today he will be performing with his wife. Uh, he's Slovak by origin, living in Brno, so let me make this note, because some people are asking about it. Uh, Czech and Slovak are mutually intelligible. Brno is probably the second biggest Slovak city. And Brno universities, companies, and cultural institutions would completely collapse without Slovaks. And that's it for me. I give the words to Katarina, who will introduce the first uh, musical piece. Thank you. Thank you for a beautiful introduction. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are happy that we can speak to you through music today. Um, uh, today we present you the music of Evgen Zamechnik, the composer of Brno. Uh, together with my husband, we are going to perform a small piece for violin and piano called Canto. The work was written in 1970s and uh, it is, uh, its theme is clearly inspired by voice that is singing. Enjoy.
Okay, so hello everyone. We're really happy to see that a fair amount of you made it here. Up until the last minute, we weren't sure what was going to go on. And so Lukas will start our presentation and I'll take over the end. Okay, so I would like to welcome also everybody on behalf of, of the um, technical chairs, me, Laurie, uh, Petr Motlicek, and Odette um, Schrenborg. And, and uh, I have to say that I'm really happy that I see especially uh, so many people here today because until today morning we were really not sure how many people will show up here in Brno and um, whether our work will be actually worth of something. And uh, at the end, uh, I was really surprised to see so many people coming to Brno. So uh, welcome everybody here. And of course, also those who are watching us remote, um, hopefully we will uh, see you uh, at the next closest conference already in person. So um, us as, a, uh, as, a, as technical chairs, 
uh, I must say that uh, this work on this conference was especially challenging uh, because of the hybrid nature and, and everything was changing under, other, under our hands. Uh, people were switching from, from uh, in-person to remote and we were moving people from one session to another one. So we would like to present you some of the challenges in the, in the numbers that we have on the following slides. So as I said, I'm happy that many people came in person. So you can actually see that 354 people should be now here in person in Brno, which I think that in reality will be a little less, but it looks like that it, it's more than 300 people here in Brno, which is more than 15% of people attending the conference out of uh, about nine, 1,900 people in total. And yesterday there were uh, 75 people in, here in person for tutorials, which is about 23% of uh, all the people attending tutorials, so it's even larger percentage. And uh, here, uh, during the conference, uh, you will see presentation of 963 papers. Uh, out of those, 709 are present in these new unified virtual sessions. So, so these are the uh, poster-like sessions that you have already seen. And again, one of the technical challenges, you can actually see that uh, we are uh, they are running these virtual rooms and they, uh, uh, they are running uh, up to 104 such virtual rooms in parallel. So there was one of the technical challenges here also. So, so far it looks like that it works uh, reasonably well. Uh, we have uh, 127 oral presentation, 127 presentation in 14 special sessions, uh, four keynotes, four survey talks, uh, six uh, tutorials which were yesterday, uh, 29 show and tells, and we also introduced new uh, area this year, which is this uh, speech, voice and hearing disorders, which is actually a mixture of speech science and, and speech technology, uh, is bringing speech science and speech te technology people uh, together. So uh, that seems to be also successful. There is, I think, 103 papers actually ended up in, in this uh, area. Mm -hmm. And here we have statistics on how many uh, people uh, are participating in conference. Uh, there, there's the breakdown by country. So you can see that uh, most of the people are from uh, USA. So these are basically people that registered for InterSpeech. And uh, in, the, in the bar, the, the total height of the bar is how many people registered, and the uh, orange proportion of that is how many people actually came in person. So you can see that this year, most of the people, surprisingly, came to InterSpeech in person from Czechia, uh, 59 uh, people. And I hope that this is the first and last uh, InterSpeech where something like that happened. Uh, and, and, uh, the the uh, second largest number is now USA, but uh, in the uh, to, today morning I checked that actually the actual number of people registered uh, from from USA were uh, less. It was actually 28 people. There are pe still people coming, but uh, we have to. Uh, these are basically people that registered for in-person participation, and some of them didn't make it. Didn't make it at the at the end. So. Uh, anyway, most of the people from uh, USA, China, Japan, third, uh, Germany, fourth, and there is actually lots of participants from uh, in-person participants from Germany and France. Uh, here, the next slide shows actually graph. Uh, so this is now about submissions. The, the statistics before were about people coming to the conference. Now it's about the papers at the conference. So number of submissions and the graph actually shows timeline when uh, papers were submitted to the conference. So the graph actually shows the when the last update of the paper was submitted. So you can see and the uh, two uh, red horizontal bars shows the deadline for the submission and then we had people could still for one week update the paper so it shows the deadline for submission and deadline for the update so you can see that there are few people that submitted the uh, the their papers before the first deadline and they never updated the papers but the most of the papers were actually updated during the uh, last two days and half of the paper were still updated the last day so many people leave it for for the last minute uh, uh, so we had uh, altogether 2,277 submissions, uh, which is, uh, as we uh, know, the, again, the record for InterSpeech. Then uh, there were ma many papers withdrawn or some editor reject. So uh, at the end, uh, 1,990 went actually to reviews, 963 were accepted, which gives us uh, about 48% uh, acceptance rate. And here we see the breakdown of the submissions by country. So you can see that actually most of the uh, submissions comes from just few countries. China is the most, uh, USA is less, uh, or second, then India is third. 
and so on. Uh, you can, on this graph, you can also uh, see that basically the height of the bar is how many papers were submitted, and the uh, uh, blue part is how many were accepted from that country. So I will leave it up to you to uh, look at this graph. You can actually find it in the abstract book, in the message from uh, technical chair. So if you want to spend more time on it, you can look on at that. Sure, and I will pass the word to Laurie. Okay, so here um, we're showing you on the left the number of accepted and rejected, well, accepted and submitted papers sent by region, which is a little bit easier. So you can see that if you look by region, we still have the most coming from Asia, but there are a lot from Europe and North America. So we're, the, Europe has a lot of countries and we're all submitting some, but the sum of us is a fair amount. Um, this is the number of reviewers by region or continent. And here we see a big disparity. So Asia is quite a bit lower than the number of submissions. And so there's two things we'd like to say here is please encourage your colleagues to sign up as reviewers. We need them as, a, as ISCA in general. And second is we believe that some of our messages sent to certain countries in Asia were blocked for political reasons. And we would like to hope that this will be gotten around in the future. I don't want to say too much about that. Uh, this is showing the reviews coming in, and unfortunately, reviews are sort of like the um, paper submissions. They start off really, really slowly. I don't know, is this a pointer? I'm scared to break anything. So they start off pretty slowly. We had about 65% of the reviews at the deadline, which is the red line, and... I don't show as before, just press the button, and there is a remove. Ah, okay. Okay, uh, when you were almost done. Uh, so, so the, forget about that. So, <laughs> so we see that about, a, I know, I, I know. So we see, I'm not used to doing that. So we see about a week after the deadline, we got about 90% of the reviews in. And this period here is really, really hard for the area chairs. So once again, we encourage you to at least inform the area chairs if you're doing your reviews late, I'm getting them in, I promise I'll get them in, and really do it. It's really a plea because the area chairs worked really, really hard to get the review of everyone's papers. Um, and then, is that it? No, oh, sorry. Okay, this is the high tech <laughs> new equipment that we, <laughs> GPUs that were used for doing session organization, and we have Hansa to thank for this. And so you can see how the organization of the sessions was done. And I, do we have one more slide, or that's it? Yeah, I think so. Two more. Oh, okay. And this is now the number of oral presentations by country. Um, basically, it was decided that all the oral presentations would be, all the in-person presentations would be oral, and all of the remote ones would be in this virtual homogenized type session. Uh, the program was fixed on July 30th, and so you can see there's been some changes to it, and that's why we'll have some remote presentations and oral sessions of people that could not come at the last minute. And those are shown um, by the orange in the curves. What is it? It's one there, there. I got you. The, 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 one sorry? One more. Yeah, but it doesn't want to go. Oh, sorry. Okay. So the last slide is just a huge thanks to all the people that helped out with this, the 52 area chairs that had tons and tons of messages from us, all the different reviewers, and of course, all the authors who submitted without which interspeech would not be possible. So thank you very much. Yes, there it goes. Well, uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening from whatever time zone you may be participating in. Uh, I'm John Hansen. I'm serving as uh, ISCA president. It's my uh, distinct pleasure to welcome all of those that are in person here to Bruno, all those that are participating virtually. Uh, we welcome you as well. Uh, we are a community. It's always difficult uh, to try and overcome challenging times that we're in. Uh, but I'd have to say that uh, when this committee uh, got, the, uh, got the approval to move forward with organizing interspeech, I'm certain they didn't think that they were going to be the first conference ever to create a hybrid solution, but they did. And it shows the perseverance of energy and knowledge of the expertise here at Bruno and the organizing committee. 
So I'm going to give uh, a couple of highlights on things about uh, ISCA and uh, our group. Let's see, or our committee. There we go. Uh, first, uh, before we get started, I would like to acknowledge the uh, organizers from last year. Uh, Interspeech 2020 was the first conference uh, that was completely virtual uh, and a major, major challenge for the organizers there. Uh, Helen Mang, uh, Bo Xu, and Thomas Shang as uh, general chairs, and uh, the technical chairs, Jinhua Tao and Kai Yu as the technical chairs. We'd like to thank uh, all of the organizers for Interspeech 2020, all of the technical and uh, progr programmatic uh, advancements that they made uh, during the conference there. It was a great, great success. Moving on, okay, if you wanted to clap, you can. That's great. So, unfortunately, uh, in life, uh, we don't always get to uh, control everything. And uh, this past year, we had uh, uh, several of our colleagues that have passed away. Uh, and so I wanted to be able to recognize each of these uh, individuals uh, and to highlight a little bit about their background. Uh, first, uh, Carlos uh, Ferra. Uh, Carlos uh, uh, received his degrees uh, from the University of Las Vegas uh, in Cuba and uh, stayed on there as a researcher and ultimately uh, uh, became uh, vice dean for research and postgraduate graduate courses. Uh, Carlos was very, very involved in the speech processing and speech science domains. Uh, he received the National Award of Cuba Academy of Sciences in 2003. Uh, a number of uh, his papers are well cited uh, in the area of speech analysis, time frequency, domain-based methods, uh, a number of approaches for uh, consonant uh, analysis as well as glottal pulse uh, characterization. Um, Carlos was uh, unfortunately uh, uh, stricken with COVID and passed away. Uh, his paper 1540 was scheduled to uh, be presented here at Interspeech, and his colleagues have uh, uh, carried on his, his memory and legacy and will be presenting his paper during the conference uh, this week. Um, I'm going to get through the other two and then we'll have a moment of silence for everyone, but uh, Carlos is someone uh, I've communicated with his wife and uh, he was beloved by uh, countless people that uh, he came in contact with. He was a dedicated edu education uh, an educator at his university and mentored many, many students uh, in his career. Uh, next is Jean-Pierre Tubac. Uh, many of you that have been involved with ISCA as well as the previous organization, ESCA, uh, know Jean-Pierre quite well. He received his PhD in applied math at the Joseph Foray University in uh, 1970 and went on uh, to uh, his PhD was uh, the first uh, thesis uh, in France on automatic speech recognition. Uh, he also uh, joined IBM and then ultimately went to uh, French Telecom Tech as a professor and uh, served as the deputy science director uh, of LTCI CNSRS. He was a member of the uh, National Coordination Group for the Speech Communication uh, Group, that's called GRECO and he was one of the 10 founding members of the European Speech Communication Association, or ESCA, uh, which was the pre predecessor of ISCA. Uh, also, in his commitment to the field in our community, he was the first general chair of, of our conference uh, lineage here, uh, Eurospeech, in September 1989. Uh, again, a dedicated educator and someone committed to the field. Uh, I would also point out uh, he was one of the pioneering uh, researchers in the field of pitch synchronous overlap ad Pasola. It was something that was used for voice analysis and voice conversion uh, techniques by many people in the speech synthesis domain. And finally, uh, a colleague, uh, James Kaiser, uh, Jim, I got to know when I was uh, starting as, a, as an assistant professor. Uh, if you knew Jim, uh, you would find that he was one of the most humble individuals you'll ever meet. Uh, he got his uh, EE degree from the University of Cincinnati and MS and PhDs from MIT. 
Uh, he went to work at at t Bell Laboratories and was there for many years, author of many, many key papers in signal processing and speech in the 1960s. Uh, he's well known as uh, the person who invented what was called the uh, Kaiser window, but Jim would never refer to it as that. He always called it the i not cinch window. Uh, it was used for filter design and speech uh, spectral analysis. Uh, in 1984, he moved from AT&T Bell Labs uh, during, after the breakup there to Bellcor, and continued at Bellcor for a number of years, collaborated with his brother-in-law, Herb Teeger, uh, and created what was known as the Teeger Energy Operator. It was one of the first uh, analyses on nonlinear airflow for speech production. Uh, a very ironic uh, engagement because Jim and Herb never talked to each other because Herb was a professor at Boston University Jim was at AT&T, and uh, Herb worked on airflow dynamics of production and thought that Jim wouldn't understand that part. And when Jim and Herb uh, came together, they came together because they, their wives were sisters. And so that's how they ended up interacting with each other. Jim went on and became a professor, a visiting professor at Rutgers and also at Duke, dedicated father, uh, educator, friend, and mentor of countless students, a picture uh, of Sorry, a picture of Jim uh, working with uh, one student at Interspeech 2002 uh, when we organized it in Denver. So I'd like to ask uh, those online and those here in the room to take a moment of silence for these three uh, colleagues of ours. Thank you very much. So moving on, uh, I know my time is not going to be long here, so I'll keep moving forward. Uh, the timeline, uh, Hansa had already identified the uh, spreads here. Um, uh, we do have the opening ceremony today, but I'd like to encourage you to participate in the General Assembly uh, for ISCA that takes place on Thursday. Uh, a number of highlights uh, will uh, be, be presented there. Uh, most notably, my term as uh, my second term as president will be uh, completing, so we will have uh, hopefully a new president uh, in place uh, by Thursday, and uh, uh, we will introduce that individual then. Uh, so this is the ISCA board uh, from last year and this year. Uh, we have a dedicated group of volunteers that uh, work passionately to support our community. Uh, Four of those individuals are completing their uh, t uh, terms uh, on the ISCA board, Kate, Mark, uh, Gerard, and Hema. Uh, we'd like to thank them for their uh, service and we'll also recognize them in the closing ceremony. In addition to that, uh, we did have an election uh, for, the new, for the ISCA board. Uh, nominations uh, opened in January of this year. Voting took place in uh, April, and we received over 700 votes uh, for the election process there. And uh, there were four of the current board members that had completed their first term and were re-elected to a second term, Tatuya, Phil, Odette, and Buena, all uh, working to support our community. In addition to that, we had four new uh, board members elected to uh, the ISCA board, uh, Nancy Maripolia, uh, Yoakum and uh, Prasanna. Uh, so we, we welcome them to our uh, ISCA board and to the community to support uh, speech communication. Uh, future interspeeches next year will take place in Incheon, South Korea. Uh, then we'll move uh, back to Europe here for the uh, 2023 interspeech will take place in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, finally, in 2024, I'm happy uh, to announce, if you haven't read the ISCAPAD, uh, that uh, we'll be going to Jerusalem, Israel, the first time that interspeech has been uh, in the Middle East. So we're very happy to uh, move into this uh, uh, part of the world and show, uh, highlight the research activities uh, by Israel and other neighboring countries. Uh, highlight on a couple of things, the ISCA membership continues to grow dramatically. Uh, you can see that uh, we have over 2,700 members uh, of ISCA. One of the things that is particularly, I don't know if I can point to this here. I'm not sure that does it. 
I want to turn on the what looks like the power button, so I won't touch anything. Uh, the uh, one of the things I'd like to highlight is uh, while our uh, full members have increased from 1,400 to 1,700, one of the real uh, enjoying, I guess, things that we can see over the last five years, our student membership increased from 502 to 10 uh, to 1,047. So we've doubled the student population in the last five years. And so that is a real testament to our commitment to the future of our field. Uh, and I'll just keep moving forward. Uh, finances in the, in the General Assembly, uh, Mark Hezagawa Johnson will highlight uh, some of our finances, but financially we're in very good shape. We are a nonprofit. Our goal is to break even. Uh, we don't want to make any profit on anything. We only have one paid employee for the whole society. Uh, and uh, any funds that we capture uh, are things that we fold back and support the community. Uh, I'd like to highlight just a couple of, of areas that we've made significant progress. Uh, the ISCA Diversity Committee, uh, championed by Odette. Uh, uh, Sharon Bo has been working phenomenally in the last uh, two years here. Uh, this team has moved to address a lot of diversity issues uh, in our community. Uh, for gender diversity, we also look at regional and uh, regional, uh, somehow it's going the wrong way, as a gender, regional, scientific, technology, as well as, um, uh, I would say, academic versus industry. Uh, we also track uh, diversity along different axes and provide support uh, for new programs. We have a diversity committee meeting taking place here on Wednesday. It'll be online, uh, and the link will be shared if you have interest in participating in that. Uh, we also have an L LGBTQ meeting that will take place on Thursday. Uh, that will be hybrid, in-person, as well as online. Please send an email to, di to diversity at isca-speech.com if you'd like to participate in that. Next, uh, just to highlight a couple of things, uh, we noted from the technical committee here that we're very, very active, obviously, in, in publications. We have a code of conduct here for conferences. If anyone here during either the in-person or online has any experience that they feel is unpleasant, uh, please uh, contact us at ethics. Uh, the email address is noted here. Uh, we take uh, all comments confidentially first, but we have an internal committee that reviews any complaints or issues that come up. Uh, we want to have a supportive, uh, encouraging environment, uh, both online and in person for everyone participating in our conferences and workshops. In addition to that, we also have a code of ethics for authors. Uh, this is something that's been championed over the last uh, four or five years. Uh, so we follow this very co closely when we're looking at all paper submissions and the assessment of those. Uh, Gerard uh, has focused and helped uh, dramatically on the ISCA SIGs and workshops. We actually have more participation, if you're counting the number of attendees on workshops and special interest groups, uh, than we do at InterSpeech. So uh, Gerard has really shouldered an enormous amount of work uh, over the last uh, few years to kind of make sure that this has moved well in a positive way. Uh, during 2021, there were 19 ISCA endorsed events that again helped support uh, our community uh, in times of COVID-19 conditions. Uh, we also have a very, very active student advisory group, uh, the SAC. Uh, if you are a young researcher, either virtually or uh, participating in person, we very, very much would like for you to reach out to any of the uh, ISCA SAC uh, members. We greatly like to have as many student members involved. If you wanna uh, take on a leadership role, we really would welcome that very much. Uh, and again, Odette has been uh, championing this area, uh, just doing a phenomenal job uh, in overseeing the ISCA SAC. Uh, we also have the ISCA Advisory Council. This is a, uh, the IAC is pro uh, provides us with a sounding board and gives us, uh, keeps us grounded, I guess, in things that we'd like to do and things that we need to do in order to support the community. Many of the individuals on this were uh, served in past leadership roles, either organizing inter-speech conferences uh, past ISCA presidents or, or just leaders in the field that want to give back to our community. So we thank the ISCA Advisory Council. We had a meeting earlier this morning to uh, provide some feedback on things that the ISCA board is looking at. 
Uh, some key dates to kind of look for uh, in the next uh, 12 months. First, uh, if you have an interest in organizing Interspeech 2025, we really would like you to submit a bid. Uh, the closing date would be December 15th. Uh, if you have interest, I encourage you to reach out to uh, Meg and Sebastian, uh, our two board members that help all that are interested in submitting bids for Interspeech. Uh, we also have uh, the bidding process for the ISCA Medal for Scientific Achievement, as well as the ISCA uh, Service Medal. Those would be, the deadlines would be January 5th. And then ISCA Fellows, we have nominations uh, for this process, and the deadline for uh, submissions would be February, to, uh, t February 10th. Uh, we also uh, have a very healthy program for travel grants for both students and young researchers. Uh, Torborn is the person that has championed this enormous amount of work, communications, uh, and outreach. Uh, with uh, the hybrid or online aspects here, we've been able to provide many more support for travel for uh, our ISCA members. We greatly uh, appreciate both the support from uh, industry and others that have given uh, uh, funds to help offset these costs, but also for uh, all of the students that have applied and been assessed to give support for, for travel. So congratulations to all the uh, travel grant awardees for this year. Now we move on to the awards uh, program. And so uh, Torborn uh, Swenson uh, oversees the uh, Best Paper Award. We have 15 uh, finalists that were identified from the technical committee. Uh, these are the four that will be presented today on Tuesday. And we have another one on Tuesday and the rest here on Wednesday taking place. Uh, three more on Wednesday, and then finally on Thursday, uh, three on Thursday and one on Friday. And we will note that uh, there was a, uh, a typo in one of the uh, uh, finalists were not listed actually in the book of abstracts, uh, but is a finalist and will be presented on Thursday. Next, we move on to the fellows program. Uh, Phil Green uh, has been the person overseeing this, and it's a uh, very daunting uh, task to oversee this because we have many, many qualified researchers uh, in the field that should be recognized in this. And we're capped by the number of fellows we're allowed to award based on our, our membership. Uh, so we seek nominations. We have three uh, re uh, referees that need to submit support letters. And uh, a separate ISCA fellows committee uh, does the evaluation. So it's not done by the board. It's done by an external committee. Uh, that's separate from the board, so uh, we avoid any conflict of interest issues. Uh, last year, uh, we recognized six uh, fellows. Uh, unfortunately, all six could not make uh, the travel here, so we still have uh, some of their materials, but we're going to try to recognize them hopefully next year uh, if we can all be together. And uh, this year, we have uh, eight new fellows. Uh, Phil Green would normally be up here presenting uh, this, and I would be handing out the, uh, uh, the uh, fellow certificates. Unfortunately, uh, Phil is not able to be here and uh, is online, so Phil, I'm going to step in on this one for you. Uh, the first recipient for the ISCA fellow is Mary Beckman uh, for contributions of phonology, including the uh, phono phonology of intonation and language acquisition. And uh, that's her certificate. Congratulations, Mary. I'd have to say, uh, in part of my research, I work on speech under stress. So when that happened, I thought I was going to be electrocuted or something. Um, so uh, Mary, again, congratulations on, on receiving uh, ISCA Fellow. Uh, moving forward, uh, Karen Lovisco uh, for contributions to articulatory modeling, uh, to, uh, to speech representation learning, and to bridging the gaps between speech research, machine learning, and natural language processing. Uh, Karen, congratulations on being elevated. <laughs> okay, now at least I know what to expect coming back. Uh, Eric Fosler. Luzer uh, is the next recipient of the ISCA Fellow uh, for fundamental contributions to research and leadership in the fields of speech recognition and spoken language processing. Eric, congratulations on the ISCA Fellow. 
And, and Eric was online this morning at the ISCA Advisory Council, so he asked some good questions then as well. So that's Eric's uh, uh, plaque there for uh, ISCA Fellow. Now I noted here we have eight, so we still have a few more to go. So Maxine Eskenazi uh, for contributions to phonetics, language learning, spoken dialogue systems, language resources, and for pioneering service to the community. Maxine, congratulations on being S elevated to ISCA Fellow. Next, uh, Jean-Francois Benestrier, or as how he's known, JF, uh, for leadership in the field of speaker recognition and sustained contributions to ISCA, a former ISCA president as well. So, uh, JF, congratulations on being an ISCA fellow. And uh, next, uh, Yang Lu for contributions to speech recognition and understanding, prosody modeling, summarization, sentiment analysis, and social media research. Yang, I know you're out there somewhere. Congratulations for uh, being elevated to ISCA Fellow. And we got two more. Delane Wang for leadership in the field of automatic speech uh, recognition. Congratulations, Delane. And our last ISCA fellow for 2021 is uh, Dong Yu for research and development in deep learning based automatic speech recognition. Congratulations, Dong. Okay, so these are eight uh, fellows uh, for 2021. And uh, I'll mention that uh, for last year, we did have four uh, pioneers that were recognized for service uh, for ISCA. Isabel Trancoso, uh, Julia Hirschberg, Roger Moore, and Sadaki Farui. All four of these individuals have made sustaining contributions uh, for service and support for our community. Uh, unfortunately, all four could not be here at this uh, interspeech, so we're hoping they'll arrive at the next interspeech in person where we can present uh, the medals for them as well. And uh, Janet Piran Humboldt uh, received the uh, most uh, prestigious award ISCA has, the ISCA Medal for Scientific Achievement. Uh, she received this for last year, 2020. Uh, unfortunately, she could not attend either, uh, and uh, we still have her medal. So uh, she'll hopefully present or participate next year and will present it then. So let me just make uh, one comment here. With COVID-19, there are always constraints that come to play. Uh, the company that I used in order to get the medals, unfortunately, went out of business uh, due to COVID-19. And a number of the board members and myself, we were trying to find places we could get medals. And there's no shortage of medals if you want to play soccer or some sports for your children. But there's not many places that will make medals that uh, you know, are cast die and, and for societies like this. We were fortunate after about eight months of searching that another company ended up buying all the supplies from the company that went out of business, and we were able to get uh, metals from the same design but from a new manufacturer. So the next uh, two metals here, this is the service medal for 2021. Uh, historically, this is only given out very infrequently. Uh, before last year, we had only given it out four times in roughly about 18 or 19 years. Last year, we gave it out to four people in order to kind of recognize people that have really done uh, substantial work to help the community. This year, uh, we're recognizing one individual uh, who has uh, committed uh, his career to helping uh, not just ISCA, but the speech communications community. Um, and uh, the ISCA Medal for Special Service in 2021 is going to uh, Martin Cook for sustained service to ISCA and the speech communication uh, community for publications and community support. So if you look at every publication that ISCA has ever produced, 
It has a DOI or a tag there that gives you a document ID. Martin himself came up with a solution that, to take all of our publications since day one and migrate them to an online system for indexing and so forth. Incredibly important when you're trying to uh, uh, get credit for the work that you do. So I'll just highlight here, this is a uh, certificate, uh, a plaque certificate for uh, the uh, ISCA Service Medal, and that's the actual medal there for, uh, for Martin Cook. So uh, Martin is not able to join us here. Hopefully he'll be here next year, but let's have a round of applause for Martin and his... <laughs> Martin, I know you're online. Thank you very much for everything you've done. So our last uh, award for today is the ISCA Medal for Scientific Achievement. This is the highest honor that ISCA uh, awards. It's only given to one individual each year. Uh, it's a terribly difficult process to uh, select just one person. Uh, ISCA supports so many branches of our field for both science and technology that it's always difficult to try and identify one person. Uh, we've gone through the full application process here. It went through multiple rounds of voting, uh, and the person for 2021 to receive the uh, ISCA Scientific Medal is Herman Ney from Aachen University for pioneering and seminal contributions to data-driven methods for automatic speech recognition and machine translation. And that's the... This, this is the uh, certificate, and that's the medal. And I'd like to ask uh, Herman if he would come up and we would present it for him here. So next, uh, I'm going to invite uh, uh, Sebastian Miller to uh, come to the stage to uh, give the introduction for our keynote speaker. Uh, Sebastian serves on the board, but was one of the uh, individuals that helped uh, with the nomination process here. So, Sebastian. Yeah, it's very difficult to remain short, uh, but I will try to be short because we will have the speech from Hermann just uh, in a minute. So there are very few researchers worldwide that are active in both automatic speech recognition, ASR, and machine translation. And Hermann Nye has directed several important innovations in speech and language processing. So it's not only about speech, but also about language processing. In his research, specifically on ASR, he emphasized the underlying scientific concepts of building operational systems. And I think it's worth mentioning that that was always his aim to build something which is useful, which is uh, worth in practice, which is trained on real data, not on, not on few simulated scientific data, but on real data. Uh, these uh, underlying concepts are the base decision rule for optimal performance, the consistent modeling of the knowledge sources, such as the acoustic phonetic models, the pronunciation lexicon, and the language model, a coherent training criterion, and then a holistic decoding strategy. 
Hermann showed that these scientific concepts originally developed for generative modeling in ASR could be successfully extended to neural network modeling and to purely symbolic processing tasks like translation of natural language. And we will see, I think, some examples in his talk uh, in a minute. So really this end-to-end -end, uh, sequence modeling, that's something which, which is, uh, is something which, which will be, uh, which is transferable for, for a number of different tasks in speech and in language. As a result, he and his team have in, introduced a wide spectrum of significant research contributions that have marked a number of major breakthroughs in ASR and machine translation and became standard references in the field. And I would just mention here the ASR architecture and decoding, the language modeling, and the data-driven um, machine translation of speech and text. And uh, there are so many other things we could say about Hermann. Uh, the awards he has received before this uh, ISCA Scientific Medal, but I think I leave in the interest of time here, and uh, we will hear Hammond's talk just after the next piece of music. Okay. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Excuse me for pushing you out of the podium because we are running a little bit late. Uh, late. Katerina and Milan are preparing for the final musical piece and we'll be finishing approximately quarter an hour uh, delayed. We start uh, immediately afterwards with Herman Ney's talk. We also extend uh, his talk uh, by quarter an hour, so the dinner or light dinner break will be a little bit shorter. So after Milan is finished, there will be no formal conclusion of the session, but Herman will start to prepare. And I thank all the speakers and our musicians, especially.